you'd see the inauguration on television today? Oh. History. I'm just reminding you that it's 8 o'clock and it's time to talk with Milton Berle. You have to remind me of America's number one. <laughs> my <laughs> is on, my, my, my television is on. Well, I just wanted to make sure because I know how you like him. I wouldn't miss Mr. Berle uh, unless it was absolutely unnecessary. <laughs> <laughs> Every Tuesday at half past seven, like clockwork, I put on my suit with Dinah Shaw and a quarter to Don Cameron Swayze. I'm hopscotching through my cutlets. <laughs> and when it's time for the garbage, it's time for Milton Berle. I know Milton Berle is everybody's favorite, so have a good time. Personally, I'm going to the movies. Listen, darling, what's nourishment for one can be poison for somebody else and vice versa. But Rosalie, Rosalie, come quickly, quickly. The technical men are in my living room. Oh, we're the men of Texaco. We work from Maine to Mexico. There's nothing like this Texaco of ours. Our show tonight is powerful, we'll wow you with an hour full of howls from a shower full of stars. We're the merry Texaco men, tonight we may be showmen, tomorrow we'll be servicing your cars. I wipe the pipe, I pump the gas, I rub the hub, I scrub the glass, I touch the clutch, I mop the top, I poke the choke, I sell the pop, I clear the gear, I block the knock, I jack the back, I set the clock. So join the ranks of those who know, and fill your tanks with Texaco. Sky fill up the sky sheet, and you will smile at the pile of new miles you will add. Fire sheet, fill up with fire sheet, you'll find that Texaco's the finest friend your car has ever had. woman and man on the street, the farmer, the model, the cop on the beat, the taxi cab driver, the model for sweaters, the waitress, the man who delivers your letters, the newsboy, the milkman, the cute secretary, the banker, the nurse who is so necessary. The way that you voted made headlines today. Is there anything else that you'd like to say? We have a spokesman and we'd like to say He was chosen by himself for this oration Now who would do a thing like that? Yes, who would do a thing like that? to public speaking, I admit I'm overcome by your persuasion. It behooves me to express, in a million words or less, the importance of this memorable occasion. The Humber. It's the 20th of Jan, and today a certain man will succeed leader number 33 in the land of the brave and the free. We like right, right. that's what we like. Right. He'll continue with the plan that another man began. I'm referring to President Number One. Who gave all that he could give, and his name will always live for the great things he has done. Our uncle, yes, Uncle Milky. What is it? He did chop down a cherry tree. Well, he was youthful, but George was truthful. <laughs> his honesty made history. His father didn't spank him, though he didn't deserve to catch it. The old man was no fool. The kid was standing there with a hatchet. George clever. Oh, yes, very clever. <laughs> we know just what you mean. Very true. Now you just spoke of George and I. We know what they both are like. What, what about, about the president's in between? This is no time to talk about their politics and aims. You can't fool us. We bet that you don't even know their names. I don't know their names? Okay. 
friends, neighbors, and constituents, brooking no interference, I give you all the presidents in order of their appearance. Now, number one was Washington. He was the country's favorite son. First in peace, but here's the payoff. Thanks to him, we get a day off. Then came John Adams. He was number two. I don't remember him, do you? Jefferson, Virginia resident, was truly a model president. Madison's fame will never go dim. They named an avenue after him. You've often thought of him, though, haven't you? While walking up on Madison Avenue. Though, to tell the truth, I never have, although I've walked on Madison Ave. James Monroe was a man of note for the doctrine which he wrote. We had roads, but few McAdams in the days of John Q. Adams. Hard as nails, he knew no trickery was Andrew Jackson, old hickory. Tell me what is more enduring than the name of Ed Van Buren. You're amazing, you're surprising, you're so great at memorizing. More? See if I can remember some more. Now, Harrison Tyler, James K. Pope, as far as I know, folks, they were oak. Taylor and Fillmore, to me, are a mystery. Look them up if you have a history. And while you're at it, see what it says about Franklin Pierce, 14th Prez. Others did, but I'm not panning. Number 15, James Buchanan. No one to my way of thinking holds a candle to Abe Lincoln. Andrew Johnson got an elevation following Lincoln's assassination. U.S. Grant was a man among men, a gosh might and fight and gen, but little did he presume, I presume, that he would be buried in Grant's tomb. Rutherford James and Chester and Grover, a few first names that I pass over. I think it would be embarrassing not to remember Benjamin Harrison. Here we go. Because I read a bit too thinly, I skipped over Bill McKinley. Roosevelt Teddy was rough and ready, wild and woolly, and always said bully. William Taft was a good old craft, built rather bulky, four and a half. The ship of state, he really could row, meaning Wilson, first name Woodrow. Really don't know much regarding. President Warren gave me a heart. Calvin Coolidge was one who said, I do not choose to run. Herbert Hoover, he did not want two chickens in every pot. FDR took a long-term lease on the White House all through war and peace. Number 33 was Truman. Harry's job was superhuman. We accuse you, Uncle Milky, of your genius. I plead guilty. <laughs> Now from shore to shore, we're rooting for the president. We all adore the one and only Ike. Pull out the carpet, strike up the music. Let's give a welcome to Mr. Yankee Doo. From California, back to Maine. Yes, everybody knows his name. Man of the hour is Eisenhower. Yes, he's a real life true American. The kind that people like, although they call him I, I like to call him just Mr. Yankee Doodle. Yes, sir! We like I, I like the one we like. We like I, I like the one we like. Can you imagine that? That must be his little secretary, huh? Oh, my God. That must be his little secretary. Look how sad she is, huh? Oh, She's always my. calling him up, Ma. He's always She's calling him up. That Milton Berle, darling, if he only wanted to, he could, he could reach the sky. He could, I don't know, he could be uh, in, in the highest profession. He could be, what shall I say, he could be a, a, a CPA. <laughs> Or my telephone. If it's for me, tell them I'm glued. Look, Ma, that's not our phone. It's the phone on television. <laughs> oh, my, what do you think? I thought it was our telephone. It sounded just like a phone. It was so phony. Oh, it must be a little secretary. She's always calling him up. 
<laughs> Oris is so sad. Look, look, he's in his dressing room now, Rosalind. Hello? Hello, Milton. Max! Honey, this is no time to call me. The show is over. I want to relax, Max. What do you want, Max? Guess who this is. Guess who it is? All right. Is it Catherine? No. Mabel? No. Edith? No. Sam? No, it's Maxine. Oh, really? Milton, I'm not jealous, yeah. but who is Sam? <laughs> Sam is a tailor, I know. He, he makes my pants for me. For you too, Milton. All right, Max. Max, you're making the pants too long. Every week. Let's not fight this, Milton. It's bigger than both of us. Always with the fight routine. Again with the look slapsy, Maxie. Can I have a little peace? Is there no justice? Oh, Milton, there's a little justice of the peace around the corner. All right. All right, so give the man the two dollars. Is this why you call up to no. tell me? Look, what do you want? What is it you want? I called you up to tell you that my mother thinks it's terrible that I call you up. She said that when she was a girl, she never called any fellows. Uh-huh. She had a strict father? Uh-uh. No phone. <laughs> no, she had no phone. It's no use talking. Your mother's right, Max. You shouldn't call up fellas. Wait for them to call you. When will you call me, Milton? Oh, in about six months. <laughs> Is that definite? Yeah, that's definite, yes. All right. And if I don't hear from you in six months, yeah. I'll call you tomorrow. <laughs> Max, I don't want you to call me. I, I see you during the day when you're working here as my secretary. But if I don't call you at night, you'll forget all about me. You know what they say, Milton? What? Out of sight, out of mind. Yeah, that's right. I'm out of your sight, and you're out of your mind. <laughs> all right, I'll tell you what, uh, Max. I I'll send you my photograph. Oh, Milton, you will? Yeah. Well, it doesn't have to be a large photograph. Not a large one? Uh, just life-size. <laughs> life-size? That's the way Mother got Daddy. Oh. Huh. W will you also autograph it? All right, I'll autograph it for you. That's the way Mother got Daddy. All right. Will it be in a frame? No, you'll have to frame me. That's the way Mother got Daddy. <laughs> Max, will you please stop talking about getting married? Don't fight it, Milton. Every time you talk about marriage, you give me a pain in my... It's bigger than both of us. Oh, sides. shut up! Why, that girl Max is so funny. To you, to you, it's funny, and and and, and her, her pure her heart is breaking. Ma, it's only make believe. Make believe the way that girl is suffering. That's make believe. What do you mean? Look how that girl is suffering. With every joke, you could cry. Oh my, look at that. So why shouldn't he marry her? Look, ma, he's not going to marry her. Haven't you got a sense of humor? When it comes to marriage, there's no humor and there's no sense. <laughs> I can't stand it, Rose. Now, I'm going to call Milton on the telephone. Oh, my, no, please. Don't arm or know me, please. Why not? After all, I know him well enough for that. Didn't he entertain at my Wednesday afternoon club that Friday night? Here, here's the book. And, and look it up. All right, Ma, I'll look it up, but I think you're making a big mistake. He'll only laugh at you. No, so I laugh at him every week, so he'll laugh at me. <laughs> so be even, Stephen, so. <laughs> Look, Ma, he'll never marry that girl. Why not? Look what a wonderful couple they are. Why not? Look, number one, she's a girl and he's a man. What more do you need? And, and number two, she works for him. She helps him in his business. There are many married couples in television that work together. After all, there's, there's uh, Georgie Burns with Gracie Allen. There's Tex with Jean. There's Lucille Ball with Izzy Arnett. <laughs> Yeah, Wait, circle 78300. Yeah, so dial me. Look, Ma, listen. Yeah. Don't you want to think this over before you call up Milton Burl and tell him you ought to marry that girl? Rosalie, darling, if your papa and me stop to think, you wouldn't be watching television tonight. <laughs> stop me if I'm wrong, my talking encyclopedia. Hello, NBC? Will you please connect me with Milton Burl? Person to person. Yeah, Milton Burl. His show is just over. Say person to person. Yes, operator. Milton Burl. Sandra's boy, person to person. Ma, you don't say person to person. Why not? He's a person and I'm a person. <laughs> After all, if a person 
person don't want to talk to somebody else on the telephone. All they do is hang up and they say, hello? Hello? Oh, uh, who's this? Who's this? Uh, Milton, I haven't seen you since you entertained my lady's auxiliary. How are you, darling? Well, Mrs. Goldberg. How are you, Molly? It's good to hear your voice, Molly. How's Jake, Molly? How's Rosalie, Molly? How's Sammy? Uh, guess who this is? <laughs> uh, Gloria Swanson? <laughs> Gloria Swanson, not anymore, darling. She's a petite and I'm a stylish stout. Oh, uh, I wouldn't say that. Uh, let's not fight this, Milton. I'm bigger than both of us. Yeah, and besides, Gloria Swanson is from Sunset Boulevard and you're from Southern Boulevard. What's, uh, what's on your mind, Molly? Did you see my show tonight? Did I see it? Yeah. It was wonderful. Yeah. Before I could even turn it off, your hour was over. <laughs> Thank you, I think. Did you, uh, did you call me up to tell me how much you enjoyed the show? No, Milton, what I called you for is no laughing matter. I would like to talk to you in person, in the flesh. In the flesh? Well, it's too late for that. I'm dressed already, you see. <laughs> ready to leave the theater and everything. <laughs> Milton, you're just as funny in person as you are in real life. <laughs> Thank you, Molly, and say hello to Fibber. Would you do that for me? Uh, could you come over to my house and talk it over? Talk what over? I'm pretty busy, Molly. See, I gotta spend the next three nights getting my jokes together for next week's show. Oh, at night you have to get your jokes. What's the matter with the daytime? <laughs> what jokes can I steal from Garraway? <laughs> so, um, why don't you tell me what it's all about on the phone, huh? Uh, listen, darling, come over to my apartment and I'll explain you. It's for your benefit, Milton. Oh, a benefit? Sure, I'll be glad yeah. to come. Why don't you say so? I'll be, I'll be over. I'll, I'll be over tonight. We'll talk about it, huh? All right, wonderful. Don't forget, Milton. Yeah. I'm expecting. Congratulations. I mean, uh... <laughs> Goodbye. What a Molly Goldberg. Hey, where's Bob, Bobby Sherwood? Bobby! Bobby Sherwood! Bobby! Oh, don't, please don't stop me. I'm so guilty. Oh, listen. You with the song, making this bad with Joe. What's the bit? What's the bit? Take, I'm it, take it easy. To, what's jogging in the noggin? What's rattling around the little old think tank? Well, where, where, are you, where are you going now? Where are you going? I got a date with a beauty. You got a date with a beauty? Cancel the date because you're going to go with me. I got a date with a beast. I was... <laughs> yeah? Well, <laughs> young man. Starting tomorrow, I don't need you. There is a piano a player available. Don't go away. <laughs> There's a piano player available. Dad, why? I don't think you can get the piano player. I... <laughs> I can't? Don't be silly. Independence Day came a little early this year. Look, All right, now listen, Ludlow. Yeah, what is it? Who is this big date you have for me? I've got a date. We're going over to see Molly Goldberg. Molly Goldberg? Yeah, Molly Goldberg. Don't you know Molly Goldberg? You yeah. see, look, she just called me on the telephone. She wants me to do a benefit. And I want you to be on the benefit. Okay. You know what I mean? Will you be on the benefit for it? Sure. We'll do a little, and we'll get the Andrews sisters. But look, here's what I want to do. I want to flatter the Andrews sisters, see? I want to oil them up and tell them how great they were on my show tonight. Good. I'll flatter them, I'll oil them up. Then maybe we can get them to come over and do the benefit. You, you see, to. that's the only way we... Good night, Milton! Oh, Andrews sisters! We, uh, I just got a telephone call, and I was just talking to Bobby, Bobby Sherwood here, and I was praising you. Tell him, what did I just say? <laughs> you just said that you'd oil him up and then ask him to play the band. Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> you see, that does it. Well, let me see. Right after, right after the inaugural, Bess and catching a train with Harry. So if I sent him a telegram on the train, off from job, no, he'd want too much money. I would. <laughs> Look, uh, we're going to do this benefit. Would you girls like to play the benefit? No, huh? I'm sorry, Milton. One benefit a night is enough. No, what? How about the lettuce for this one? Yeah, the cabbage. Yeah, but, the pale. Yeah, well, look, girls, I, 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 what do you want, a salad or something? Well, or... let's make it a green one. With $1,000 dressing. And start tossing it right now. What down. do you want, come a toss? Come on, please. Now, please, now, wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. Everybody on my show gets paid just 10 days after their performance. Each performer does that. So there's three of you, so you've got to wait 30 days. You see, that's... Oh, what's the What do you mean, wait? Clever, but yeah. we heard about that. What do you mean? You still owe the Fred Waring Glee Club. Yep, you your radio show in 1934. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's a piano play lot. <laughs> The radio show from 1930. That's not a. That's all. All untrue. It's not true. I really. I never heard of such thing. You can. I paid him last month. I even gave my brother Frank the money, and he went to pay him, and he went down to Bermuda. My brother Frank went to Bermuda. 
<laughs> on a yacht, too. How do you like that? I believe that stupid story I asked him when he was going on a yacht. He said there was a bus strike. <laughs> Everybody takes a bus to Bermuda, but my brother Frank's got to go buy a yacht. Everybody well, I'm sorry, Milton. If you want us to work this benefit, you've got to pay us for the show tonight. Now? Yes, now. Not tomorrow. We did our job. We stopped the show. So pay us off. In cash. Cash, cash. Who's got cash? You, you, only you. I'm just crazy about All money. Right, just huh? He's got Guy Lombardo. I paid him off in Connecticut money, in Canadian look, money. Look, honey, you better... He moved, he moved. Are you going to pay us off or are we going to have to rock him off? Do you want me? I thought you were calling a cop in London. <laughs> I'll give you what cash I have. Whatever cash I have on me, here. Here's it. $200. Now, the... now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. $200 yeah. is not enough? Yeah, well, it's on account. You see, it's the new Burrow layaway plan. The layaway plan? Yeah, yeah. Are you kidding? We heard about that also. You pay a little now and the rest when the people are laid away. I was... Come on. <laughs> now, now, look. Now, please. I, I have... Look. I'll give you some more. Would you turn around? Yes. Turn around. Okay. <laughs> Left, 31. 28 right. Chest expanded, 44. Re-expanded, 45. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's it. Here you are, girls. There oh, you. that's fine. There, that'll do it. We gotta go now. I gotta go over now, to see Mr. Now, wait a minute. You can dig more up than this, but, Bill. No, I come on, come on. the whole thing no, on. I, you, for heaven's sake. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know how Adams makes money on these hats. <laughs> well, I, I gotta go, girls, and I put on my... Who put out the lights? <laughs> There will be a 15-minute pause while we fix the video on the show. Oh, come on, Milo. You're flipping your lid. I am flipping my lid. Look, girls, here's what's going to happen. I'm going to go over. I'm going over to Molly Goldberg's house. Will you do the benefit? Will you? You sure, sing the song. Sure. Will you sing the song that you sang on the show tonight? And you will come. Hey, I forgot. Max. Where is Max? That secretary, she drives me crazy. She usually comes back right after the show and tells me how lovely I look. But she's not. I'll get her. Max. Here, Max. 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 Here, Max. Here, Max. 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 Sheba. Sheba. Come, little Sheba. That is, oh, boys, uh, did you see my cute little dog? I mean, uh, my cute little secretary, Max, around here? Uh, no, I haven't, Uncle Moldy. Uncle Moldy? <laughs> Every time I ask you guys a question to do the same thing, what's the matter with you? You drive me crazy. I can't even get a simple answer. Everything happens to me, and that goes for you, too. Has he always been so nervous? <laughs> well, no, he hasn't, Thoughtful, but you see, Uncle Milty is not himself tonight. Yes, I noticed the improvement here, yes. <laughs> Hey, you know, he gave me an idea. So what's that, uh, Daniel? Well, if Nelson, if Jimmy Nelson doesn't show up tonight, who cares? I beg your pardon. Who needs him? So what do you mean? Well, look. He's, he's a monotonous guy. Yes, he is. The way he says things like, uh, Texaco Sky Chief Gasoline gives you quick starts and fast warm-ups. Yeah, that's how he sounds, yeah. But if I gave an invitation of James, no one would know the difference. What do you mean? Well, listen to this. Texaco Sky Chief gives you quick starts and fast warm-ups. Sky Chief packs a punch. Yeah, yeah, you sound just as jerky as he does. <laughs> I beg your pardon. You know what I mean. I mean, it was very good. You know, I give a pretty good imitation of Nelson myself. You do? Yes, listen to this. Sky Chief has volatile control, which means the volatility and octane are scientifically controlled. That's why Sky Chief gives you such quick starts and fast warm-ups. Exactly. Yes, yes. Now listen to this one. Sky Chief gives you extra power to zoom up hills without knock or ping in your motor. <laughs> I like it. I like it. And get a load of this one. Drop down on the accelerator pedal and get a real lift in performance. Yeah, yes, yeah, yes. Oh, yes. And on the and on the open road, 
In hills, in traffic, you're miles and smiles ahead with Texaco Sky Chief. The gasoline with a punch. So sail through winter. Sail through the So sail through winter with Sky Chief in the tank. Get it tomorrow at your Texaco dealer. Yeah, yeah, good boy. I hate to see Nelson's as good as fired right now. Do you really think so? Do I think so? <laughs> we should have fired him long ago. I need. <laughs> Yes, indeed, I'd give anything to see Nelson's face right now. Oh, that would be jolly. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> London. Look out. Look out, please. Now come back. Hey, Don't hi, 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 What are you doing? Oh, hello, kids. I'm hi, sorry. Dear. I feel very bad. Danny and Humphrey just walked out on me. Well, honey, maybe they're getting tired of saying the things that you just want them to say. What do you mean, what I want them to say? They only say things they believe. Oh, yes, really? Really, really? Oh, I, was... I don't believe Well, I'll show you what I mean. Come here, will you help me? Sure, yeah, we'd love to. All right, now, sometimes I say things like, uh, well, I say to Danny, what's the greatest name in lubrication? Marfax. <laughs> right. So drive in for Marfax chassis lubrication at your Texaco dealer. You see, Marfax is Texaco's tougher, longer-lasting lubricant. Really? <laughs> Yes, it gets rid of squeaks, squeals, and rattles quicker than you can say Marfax. It sticks to bearings and other points of wear, even on rough roads. Resists jar out and wash out. You don't say. <laughs> now what? <laughs> what gives your car? <laughs> what gives your car that smooth, cushiony feeling that lasts a thousand miles or more? Marfax. Right again. And your Texaco dealer applies Marfax always by chart, never by chance. And by the way, what make car do you drive? Well, I... Regardless of the make or model car you drive. Gee. Your Texaco dealer follows the lubrication charts for your particular car. So get that cushiony feeling tomorrow. Drive in for Marfax chassis lubrication at your Texaco dealer. He's the best friend your car ever had. That looks like fun. You like that? Gee, can I try it? You want to try it? Sure, come over here. Come over here. Oh, gosh, what do you want? Get on my knee, just like a ventriloquist dummy. That's good. There we are. Steady. No, not yet. Now, Just stay sitting right here. And let's do that song that you girls recorded, that one called The Sunny Boy. Oh, Maxine, will you tell her we'll be over at Mrs. Goldberg? I'll tell Maxine you're over at Mrs. Goldberg. Yes. Okay, right. bye. Thanks for helping me you're out, welcome. girls. Thanks a lot for helping me. So 
you see, Maxine, darling, that's why I asked you to come up. Because if you want me to help you with Milton Berle, first I have to know if you really love him, or if it's like Rosalie said. What did you say, Rosalie? Make believe. Make believe. Well, it's not make believe, actually, huh? You 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 really love him, huh, darling? After all, huh? Oh yes, Mrs. Goldberg. The very first day I met Milton, I fell desperately in love with each other. Yeah. <laughs> so what's holding up, if you'll excuse the expression, the Neptune? Huh? After all, if you love him, tell me, maybe Milton expects certain requirements from a girl. Oh, I know the requirements. Yeah. For a girl to marry the man she wants, yeah. she must be beautiful, intelligent, witty, resourceful, intellectual, and single. Yeah. I'm single. Yeah, but maybe, darling, maybe, maybe Milton don't feel about you the way you think he does. Oh, but I'm sure that he does, Mrs. Goldberg. Yeah. For Christmas, he sent me a very personal gift. Yeah, what did he send it on? I don't like to say it. Me, you can say. <laughs> he sent me a bed jacket. A bed. <laughs> and it wasn't only the bed jacket. Yeah, what was it? It was the note that I found with it. Oh, so what was in it, what? <laughs> it said, 60% rayon. <laughs> Man, come here. Let's talk very plain. Yes, darling? Let's take our hair down. Excuse me, it takes me an hour to put it up. But tell me, darling, are you really in love with Milton, or is it his money? Me, you can tell, because I read in a magazine someplace where he's got five million dollars. Oh, no, Mrs. Goldberg. I'd love Milton if he only had four million dollars. <laughs> and you love him, darling, and it's not just because he's Milton Berle, the star, Milton Berle, the big talent. Oh, no. No? So, without his money, without his talent? You might as well marry his brother, Fred. <laughs> Mrs. Goldberg. Yeah. I'm not in love with Milton Berle, the millionaire. No. Or Milton Berle, the television star. No. I'm just in love with Milton Berle, the nothing. <laughs> then leave it all to me. Yes, darling. Oh, he's coming. Rosalie. Yes, Rosalie. Ma. Take Maxine through the kitchen door so he shouldn't see her. Yes, I, and you go home, yeah, yes, and leave everything to me. Yes, we oh, are. Just, just leave everything to me Thank and don't you. worry. You hear? I'll call you. One second. One minute to ever. One second. Milton, darling. Rosalie, is your mother in, Rosalie? <laughs> I flatten? You look lovely, Molly. I haven't seen you in a long time. How's everything, all right? Come on, give me your coat. I'll take off the coat, sure. Rosalie! Yes, ma'am. Uh, hang Milton. Hang Milton? <laughs> Hello, Rosalie. How are you? Hello, Uncle Milton. Oh, she's a... Rosalie, did you hear what Milton said? He thought we were related. <laughs> Sit down, Milton. Yes, yeah, sure. Say, <laughs> hey, uh... Mmm. Something smells good in the kitchen. <laughs> My Jake broke a bottle of shaving lotion. <laughs> oh, I see. You're hungry, Milton? Well, not exactly. I'm not... Too... I can see you're hungry. I'm not very hungry. I'll fix you a snick snack. A snick snack? Yes. Rosalie, dear. <laughs> Rosalie, darling, entertain our guests. Take your books away, darling. Please don't spread yourself. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, Molly, I was... Who is Al Gibra? Who's this guy? Algebra. Who's this? Who's That's this? not a man. That's oh. algebra. Oh, algebra. <laughs> That's oh, you, oh, you study algebra in school? That's a silly subject. Why don't you study something like French or Italian? You, you meet a Frenchman, you speak French to him. Meet an Italian, you speak Italian to him. Where are you going to meet uh, an algebraian or something? <laughs> That's crazy. That's awful crazy. No, algebra is mathematics. Oh, mathematics! Oh, right, see, I, I, I know that. I'm smart in arithmetic. We're smart. Two plus two plus two is six. I know that. Five plus five plus five is fifteen. Ten plus ten plus ten is thirty. See, I go fast. Ask How me. much is eleven plus eleven plus eleven? <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know, the racetrack I go to don't have $11 windows. <laughs> Dice must be your game if you're thinking of 11. Milton, you don't understand, you well, see, algebra yeah. is higher mathematics. Oh, higher mathematics, that's the $50 window. Come on, you can ask me anything, I'll help you. Ask me anything, you've got a problem, I'll work on it for No, you. thanks, I don't think I need Well, it. come on, I, I can help you, Rosalie, I really can. Well, what are you studying now? Well, now we're on square roots. Square roots? What's, what's square roots? What, what's that? Well, today we learn how to extract a square root. Extract the square root? 
What are they, teaching you how to pull your own teeth or something? <laughs> That's the silliest stuff. When I was a kid, I'll never forget, when I was just a kid in school... Tommy Needle! I... Oh, oh, there's Mrs. Goldberg. Oh. Tommy Needle! Oh, thank you, Vern. <laughs> oh, Mrs. Mrs. I'm nursing and we'll talk. Well, Mrs. Goldberg, you didn't have to go through all this trouble. He did. I was going to throw it away anyway. <laughs> This is a snick snack? <laughs> this looks like a snick snack for Martha Ray or something. Uh, Milton, darling, uh, I want to talk to you. Want to take you? Oh, what you called me up on the phone about the benefit, uh, huh? Benefit? Yeah, the benefit. No, no, Milton, you were uh, wrong. Rosalie, don't talk with a mouthful. Not me, you're my tears. Okay. Uh, uh, Rosalie, you... please, maybe you can find some place to go out of earshot. Ma, if you want me to get lost, just say so. Yes, darling, get lost, but someplace where I can find you. Hey, that daughter of yours is getting cute. Uh, <laughs> studying algebra and everything, huh? Smart kid, smart girl. Yeah, uh, uh, Milton, uh, well, talking about marriage. I was... <laughs> oh, I understand it. Congratulations. Can Milton, you... that's a little immature. Imma... You see, uh, uh, the marriage that I'm trying to arrange is not going to be so easy. Why, why? You see, this girl and this boy... Wait a minute, what's the matter? Does the... does she love the fella? Yes. Yeah, well, does the fella love her? Yes. Well, what's holding up the wedding? Well, uh, that's where you can help me, Milton. Me? Yes, I, you. Uh, you see, this, uh, this certain girl. Yeah. You know, girls, uh, they're all alike. Yeah, they're all I like, too. I mean, <laughs> you mean, you mean she wants to get married, but the fella doesn't want her? You see, it's like in the movies, Milton. In the movies? Yeah, when he wants, she don't want. I mean, she wants, he don't want. And by the time they both want, mm. the picture's over. I've... <laughs> about this, this fella. Yeah. Uh, uh, can this fella support her? Oh, yeah. He can, huh? Uh, has, he got, has he got a good business? Pretty good. Does he own a store? Well, that good it's not. <laughs> Is this fella uh, good looking? Uh. What do you mean, eh? <laughs> no, sir, I'll say it another way. Eh. Uh. Oh, in other words, the guy that you talk about, he looks like a dope, huh? Oh, if you said it, but I didn't oh, say it. I, I, I get the picture. I get the picture. Look, all the guy needs is to shove in the right direction. All you have to do is to set up the wedding. Yeah. Now, she's there, and he's there, and the first thing you know, they're married. A lot of guys are very undecided about getting married. They, they think they'll be miserable, but after they take the step, <laughs> they know they are. <laughs> Listen, Molly. Do you want me to help you arrange to trap this guy? Oh, without you, there could be no wedding. You leave it to me. Uh, this sheep will lead this guy right to the slaughter, Why, believe me. Milton, do you think you could do it? Do I think I could do it? I'm going to enjoy every minute of it. But what you told me about this guy, he doesn't deserve anything but marriage. Really, he doesn't. Who would think it could be so easy? You leave everything to me. You leave... Your bus is ringing. My door. Hey, that must be the Andrews sister. Yeah. Hey, listen, they think they're going to do a show at a benefit, but they're going to do a show at a wedding. Is that yeah. right? They're going to do a wedding? Surely. I'll fix this guy up. Thank you. Yeah. Come in, come in. Come in, come in. Hi. 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 Sherwood. Kids, oh. kids, it's going to be a big surprise. It's a switch. It, it, it's, it's not a benefit. It's going to be, I want you to entertain, at a wedding. A, a wedding? A wedding. Oh, that's wonderful, Mrs. <laughs> Goldberg. When is the wedding taking place? Well, that's entirely up to Milton. Well, if it's up to me, the quicker the better. We're going to hook this schnook. <laughs> we'll, hey, listen, I got an idea. How about tomorrow night? Oh, wonderful, but the arrangements. Will you leave the arrangements for me? I'll go out and hire a hall right now. You, Andrews, you sing. Bobby, I'll go out and take care of everything. Oh, will I take care of this schnook? <laughs> <laughs> you well, talk about what you're going to do tomorrow night. Okay. Bye. 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 Oh, by the mirror, I'm so shamed. Shamer even than John Wayne. 
Yes, so how come all the girls I get look like Marjorie May? <laughs> oh, Milton. You're beautiful. You look like a page out of escrow. You're so gorgeous. Oh, the phone. Somebody's got to call me right now. Going to the schnook's wedding. Hello? Hello? Yes, this is Milton Burrow. Oh, hello. How are you, boy? Do I need a what? A producer for my television show? Oh, no, I, I produce the show myself. And even if I did need a producer, I'd get somebody with experience. <laughs> what did you ever produce? Oh, you did? Well, that's different. Sure, I'll call you tomorrow, Desi. Say hello to Lucy. <laughs> oh, that's Lucille Ball. Oh, what a great delivery. Ah, <laughs> uh, oh, you're adorable. MB, magnificent beast. <laughs> Who is the fairest one of all? <laughs> I am, Dad. Ah! Wait, wait, wait. Come here. What are you doing? What are you doing in this? What well, you, you told me to meet you here. You said we were going to the wedding. The wedding? Yeah, but you're not going to go like that. Where is your white tie and tails? This is formal. Well, that's why I brought along a mink guitar pick. A mink? <laughs> a mink guitar? Look, let me tell you something, Sherwood. If you haven't got tails, you, you, you can wear at least a dark coat to go with those dark trousers. Haven't you got a coat to match those trousers? Oh, sure, but I wear that to match the pants to this coat. Oh, shut up. <laughs> Come here, I'd rather, I'd rather have you hear this from a stranger. Look, when you go to a wedding, you're supposed to wear black and white. Oh, well, I got on black and white socks. I was... Black and white socks? Yeah. Yeah? Black. That's right. Right? <laughs> right. And what is... Ah! <laughs> nice outfit. Where do you do all your shopping? At the Schnooks Brothers? You look like Robert was when he was dressed in a dark hall. Come on, let's go over to the wedding and you stand behind me. There will be a reception in the Rose Room. And the catering is marvelous. I sample it. And eat as much as you like, but leave a little room for the wedding cake. And then we'll all gather around the wedding cake, and the bride will slice herself. Here he comes, Mr. Milton Burrell. Oh. Thank you very much. I'm very glad to be here at the wedding. Oh, Molly, you look beautiful. You look like a bride of 18. <laughs> you mean 1918. Oh, no. Don't you look pretty? Don't you look beautiful, Molly? Uh, excuse me. I, uh, yes. I promised to introduce my neighbor, Mrs. Kramer. Uh, this is uh, the star of the Texaco and Marfax Theater. I was... uh, Mr. Television, <laughs> the funniest man of them all, Mr. Milton Burrell. How do you do? How do you do? <laughs> so what's so funny about that? <laughs> I got a nephew, three years old, says, how do you do? This is a comedian? This is funny? <laughs> Thank you, Cookler friend and Molly. <laughs> well, I want to tell you, folks, it's really a great pleasure to be here at this wedding. Oh, I love weddings. When I hear the wedding music, the last wedding that I went to was Tommy Mandel's. And the wedding before that was Tommy Mandel's. And I went to a wedding before that and it was Tommy Mandel's. I could go on like this for hours. I got a subscription to all his weddings, you know. It's the wedding of the month club I belong to. I'm just kidding, I, I love weddings. They always say that the bride is beautiful and you all know that brides are beautiful. What I can't figure out is where all those homely wives come from. <laughs> marriage, you know, marriage is wonderful. Marriage all starts when a, a guy faces a woman and says, I do, and a year later, he comes home late one night and says, I did not, and his marriage is over. <laughs> marriage is just like a song. It takes two to tango and one to Reno. <laughs> I love to 
watch newlyweds. They're so happy to be with each other. You can always tell when the honeymoon is over when he starts taking the local home. <laughs> Everything is ready for the wedding. It seems that marriage is a point of view. For marriage is a word to many people, and to others it can be a sentence too. But before long, the bride will really make the vow. And it's much too late to rectify it now. She's gonna get wet. She's gonna get wet. She's gonna be formal. The groom will be normal, except that he's got rocks in his head. Until he took the step, the groom will state now. He never knew what happiness meant. But it's too late now. He'll soon be a husband, no longer footloose. He's gonna get knotted, and when he is potted, he'll discover no noose is good news. She wants a cottage small and a license she can frame. She wants to be Mrs. What's his name? She's gonna get married. Now let's usher in the ushers who are waiting for the mating to begin. Be here all aglow. She's looked from Maine to Mexico to find a guy to share her future life. Today her eyes are starry, but tomorrow she'll be sorry when she learns what it is like to be a wife. She'll scrub the pot, she'll mop the floor, she'll lie awake while hubby snores. She'll cook a meal that's really great, he'll phone and say he's working late. And in a year or maybe two, she'll have some extra wash to do. She'll drain her sacroiliac, and he'll ask her to rub his back. Justice, there is no justice. How can you smile at the pile of new wrinkles you will add? Justice, there is no justice. They say that marriage is the finest friend a girl has ever had. And now, announcing the arrival of America's foremost, uh, pardon me, three most bridesmaids, Patty, Maxine, and Laverne. <laughs> It's time to get on with the ceremony, isn't it? Indeed. Uh, I'm going to give the bride away. I'm the best man. Oh, yeah, you're the best man. <laughs> <laughs> and here comes the bride. Yeah, no, 
don't, don't get nervous, Rosalie. Don't get nervous. Boom, boom. Don't get nervous, Rosalie. This is all right. I, this is the most important step in your life. <laughs> it's bigger than both of us. Enlistments in the Foreign Legion. <laughs> uh, uh, then, then, I'll, then, I'll, then I'll join the Marines. I told you, you're too old. No, I'm not. You're too flat. No, I'm not. You're too stupid. Why don't you say that in the first place? <laughs> Look, yeah. Look, why don't you join the Waves? No. Uh, join the Waves? I nearly just joined a whack. <laughs> Look, Sergeant, all I want to do is just one thing. <laughs> Max, please, please, you and I are finished. We're through. We're through. What? After what you try to do tonight, don't you think you know it's manners to ask and wait till a man asks you to marry him? You're right. Yes, please. you're right. I'm sorry. Yes. I'll wait. You should wait. Take your time. I will. I don't have to be home until 1230. <laughs> there you go again. So long, Max. So long. No, now, no. please, please, you've done everything but try to get me with a shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> Sure. It is. <laughs> Milton! Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Before I... I want to thank Gertrude Bird. Everyone, I'd like to leave you, ladies and gentlemen, with one thought, and it comes from the bottom of my heart. May I say there's just one place for me, and that's near you. It's been a pleasure this evening for me to be so close and so near you. How about all of us making a date? For Tuesday night at 8, will you? We'll try to make show business bloom right inside your living room. And now, now that our show is through, may I say God bless you and you and you and you. And so, farewell. It's been swell being here. The curtain is descending and we thank you for attending, but before we reach the ending, may we add, remember to be loyal to our gasoline and oil, when they save you time and toil, you'll be glad. Now the clock is striking nine up, but just before we sign off, Remember, next Tuesday night on television, the great new Buick Circus Hour. And two weeks from tonight, once again, Milton Berle, presented throughout the United States and to our armed forces overseas. This Saturday afternoon on the radio, the Metropolitan Opera, presented by your Texaco dealer. The best friend your car has ever